All right, folks, let's uh, pick right up where we left off. We're done with example four and five. Let's take a look at example six. And our hint for this problem is how does this function behave with negative inputs? Well, uh, we've already talked about raising something to the two-thirds power, so this function behaves just fine with negative inputs. We have no issue there. So uh, let's go ahead and just use some algebra and see what happens. We're going to start uh, here by subtracting five from both sides. So that's going to give me the opposite of this quantity, 18 minus 3x, all raised to the 2 thirds power. Uh, if I subtract 5 from negative 4, that gives me negative 9. Then through the uh, magic of algebra, I can divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of those negative signs. And I have uh, the quantity 18 minus 3x raised to the 2 thirds power. Well, I think we had a problem like this before. Uh, in fact, in the previous problem, we had x raised to the 2 thirds power equals 9, and we said that equals plus or minus 27. So that means that 18 minus 3x, once I deal with the 2 thirds exponent there, and I'll just show you, I'll, I'll just repeat that work for you again. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll take both sides and we'll cube it. And that's going to give me 18 minus 3x. The quantity is now squared, and that's going to equal 729. And then we extract a square root from both the left and right-hand sides, and this becomes plus or minus 729 on the right-hand side. Left-hand side is 18 minus 3x, and this now equals positive or negative 27. So it looks like we have two different equations to solve. Okay, so let's take a look at each of those. I'm going to have 18 minus 3x equals 27. And then I'm going to have 18 minus 3x equals negative 27. Let's go ahead and solve those quickly. There you have it, folks. We have x equals negative 3 or x equals 15. That's our solution to this equation. Let's take a look at number 7. Number 7, we have 12 minus the square root of x plus 8 is less than or equal to 15. Uh, this problem says don't ignore the domain. So let's take a look at the domain of this function right here. We have x plus 8 under the square root, root symbol. So x plus 8 has to be greater than or equal to 0. That means x has to be greater than or equal to negative 8. So that is the domain of the function square root of x plus 8. I'm going to keep that in mind as I go through the algebra to solve the inequality. Alright folks, got to ask a question here. We're going to stop the, uh, stop the video here for just a second. Where on earth is the square root of x plus 8 going to be greater than or equal to negative 3? Of course, folks, this makes perfect sense. Everywhere on its domain, it has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 because the square root function cannot give an output of a negative number. So it just so happens that x is greater than or equal to negative 8, not only is it the domain of that square root function, but it is the solution to this inequality. All right, let's take a look at question number 8. Question number 8, holy cow, looks a lot, it looks very similar to the previous one, uh, except it looks like that uh, inequality is flipped around. So let's go ahead and run through the algebra here and see what we get. We're going to subtract 12 from both sides. That's going to give us the opposite of the square root of x plus 8 is greater than or equal to 3. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, so I have the square root of x plus 8. So I got rid of the negative sign there. I have to flip my inequality, and then when I divide this by negative 1, it's going to be negative 3. Uh, notice in the previous problem, I showed you all of that work. I was very specific to show you that work because uh, a lot of times students We'll maybe divide by the negative to get rid of the negative sign, but forget to flip the inequality. Uh, but I didn't do that here. I, did, I, I remembered to flip it. So you'll notice originally it was pointing this way. 
Now it's pointing this way. Okay, so let's answer this question. When on earth can the square root of x plus 8 be less than or equal to negative 3? Well, that's a pretty easy one, folks. Don't, don't be fooled by this algebra trickeration. This is no solution. Okay, no solution. There's no input there to this uh, square root function that will give you a negative output. Uh, so that one was pretty quick and easy. Let's move on. Question number nine. We have the cube root of the quantity 2x is less than or equal to 2x. So question is, if you cube both sides, do any sign cha signs change? If so, you'll need to address the direction of the inequality. So uh, we're th I'm thinking about this one, and, and I know that I need to, uh, basically here I have 2x on the left to the one-third power. And that's less than or equal to just plain old 2x. Um, the cube root preserves sine. So if I cube both sides, that also preserves sine. So I am not, I do not need to flip my inequality symbol because any odd root or odd exponent returns the same sign as the input. So I don't need to flip the inequality symbol there. So this is going to become now 2x is less than or equal to 2 cubed, which is 8, times x cubed. Folks, I'm pretty much thinking here that I want to solve for 0 on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Now I have something I can factor. 0 is going to be less than or equal to uh, we're going to go 2x times 4x squared minus 1. Now I can further factor that, so it's going to be 0 is less than or equal to 2x times 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. If you don't believe that this, that 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 is the factored form of 4x squared minus 1, test it. Test it out and multiply these two back together and see if you get 4x squared minus 1. All right, so what now? Well, uh, I have a, uh, an inequality with a 0 on the left-hand side, and then I have a product on the right-hand side. So I can use the zero product property here uh, to see um, what the zeros of this function will be. So I'm just going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to name this f of x. And I'm going to make a sign chart for f of x. f of x is defined for all real numbers because it is a polynomial. It's a cubic polynomial. And I have a 0 at x equals 0 because that's uh, I have an x in this factor right here. And then this right here, if I plug in x equals positive 1 half, I get a 0. So that means positive 1 half is a 0. And the other factor is going to give me a 0 at negative 1 half. So there's uh, the start of my sign chart. I have all my zeros marked. Now I need to consider when these different factors turn positive and negative. So out to the right, out to the right of x equals 1 half, everything is positive. Once I cross over x equals 1 half, this one right here turns negative. Once that turns negative, it stays negative on the rest of the number line. So I have one negative still. I have one negative, but still have two factors that are positive. Uh, so that's going to give me a negative output. Once I cross over 0, this guy now turns negative. So I have two negatives times something that's still positive, positive output. Last but not least, when I cross over negative 1 half, that factor becomes negative. I have three, the product of three negatives. The result is negative. So what were we asked to do here? We we're asked to find out when this thing is greater than or equal to zero. My sign chart is going to give me a window towards the solution. The solution will be greater than or equal to zero. So I got uh, left-hand bracket and negative one-half because it equals zero there, and then up to zero with another... Uh, right-hand bracket because I'm allowed to equal 0. Uh, and then I have to have a union with positive 1 half up to infinity. There is the solution for this inequality, folks. Hey, we are cooking with gas. we got one more problem to go. Let's see what it looks like. 
OMG, folks, I wish I had some ominous music to play in the background because this thing looks terrifying. Okay, the directions or the hints here say rewrite the equation with no negative exponents. So let's do that first. Okay, so no negative exponents. I'm going to start by saying uh, I have 2 times the quantity x minus 2 to the negative 1 third. So I'm going to rewrite that as 2 over x minus 2 to the 1 third power. So I've taken care of this piece right here. Now I have negative 1 half times x times the quantity x minus 2 to the negative 4 thirds. So the things that are in the denominator, I'm going to highlight in green. That's in my denominator. This is in my denominator because of the negative exponent. Thing in my numerator, well, the only thing left there is a 1 times x. So that's what my numerator is going to be. So this is minus x over 2 times the quantity x minus 2 to the 4 thirds power. And I want to know when this is less than or equal to 0. So the hint, first hint here says rewrite the equation with no negative exponents. Check. Second thing says find a common denominator and combine the rational expressions on the left side of the inequality. Okay, so this is a little trickier. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to rewrite this so I have a little bit more room to work. Actually, maybe I can, through the magic of modern technology, folks. Oh, look at that. That's outstanding. A little bit more room to work now. Okay, so on, uh, I, I have a denominator here of 2 times the quantity x minus 2 to the 4 thirds power. And I have a question for you. I need, I need to get a 4 thirds power over here. So I currently have 1 third. Well, I think I said third. One third, thank you. Uh, and I have to add something to that so that I get four thirds. And my question is, what goes in the box? What plus one third gives me four thirds? Well, I want to keep a common denominator, uh, so that's going to be a three down there. And then I need something that add, when I add one to it, I get four. I think that's going to be three right there. So I basically just have to add one to one third to get four thirds. Okay, so that means I'm going to have x minus 2 to the first power in both the numerator and the denominator because x minus 2 times x minus 2 to the 1 third is x minus 2 to the 4 thirds. That is fascinating. Uh, boy, I hope you don't miss the subtlety of that uh, fabulous algebra. Uh, next thing I got to do is don't forget about this 2 down here. This 2 is part of my denominator, so I need to make sure I get a 2 in the denominator for the left hand side of this uh, rational beast. All right, so uh, I think I'm going to have a common denominator now. I'm going to go ahead and simplify what I have on the left here and see what happens. So I have 2 times 2, which is 4 times the quantity x minus 2 all divided by 2 times the quantity x minus 2 to the 1 plus 1 third, that's 4 thirds. If you've forgotten properties of exponents, go back and look at page the back side of the notes page. You'll see everything you need to know about properties of exponents on that sheet. All right, so uh, we have this left-hand side simplified. Uh, now let's take a look at the right-hand side. Well, that hasn't changed, so it still looks like it did before. And this is going to be less than or equal to zero. So the whole reason I did this is if I have an inequality uh, involving a rational r rational functions, I need to combine them into a single rational function. And I can do that now because I have a common denominator. So let's take a look. This is going to be 4x minus 8. I'm distributing the 4 to x minus 2. I have to subtract x. And then I'm dividing by, now my new numerator is 2 times quantity x minus 2, all to the 4 thirds. This is a ridiculously long fraction bar. I don't need all that. Okay, let's bring that in a little bit. And we're still less than or equal to 0. Folks, we are almost, almost home. This is uh, so exciting. So 4x minus x, I can rewrite that as 3x. And then I still have this minus 8. And I'm divided by 2 times the quantity x minus 2 raised to the 4 thirds power less than or equal to 0. I am ready now to make a sign chart, folks. So let's make a sign chart for this function. 
Oh, wait a minute. Let's go back up and look at the top for a second here. Find a common denominator and combine the rational expressions on the left side of the inequality. I was so excited I forgot to go back and, and check that we'd completed that. Uh, and I've already mentioned that we're going to construct a sign chart now. So uh, let's take a look at both the numerator and denominator. So uh, in my numerator, I have 3x minus 8. Uh, I need to know when 3x minus 8 equals 0 because that'll be a 0 for this rational function. That means that x equals, well, let's see, I add 8 divided, that's 8 thirds. So I have a 0 at x equals 8 thirds. My denominator has a domain restriction. x cannot equal 2, because if it does, I'll have a 0 in my denominator. Uh, now let's talk about the 4 thirds power and see if that does anything to us. Um, well, if I have x minus 2 and I raise it to the 4th power, that's going to force it to be positive. No matter what I put in here, if I put 3 in here, 3 minus 2 is positive 1 to the 4th power is positive. If I put 1 in here, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 4th power is positive 1. So this exponent of 4 forces this whole expression in my denominator to be positive. So this denominator has no effect on the sign chart. It will be positive all the time. So that means my numerator is the only thing that affects the sign chart. So let's see what happens here. Again, I like to refer to my functions as f. I have 8 thirds. Let's see, 8 thirds, that is, uh, that's bigger than 2, so I'm going to put it over here. And 8 thirds is a 0. And then I have 2, which is a domain restriction. And like I said, the only thing that affects this sign chart is 3x minus 8. To the right of 8 thirds, the output of 3x minus 8 is positive, and everywhere to the left, it's negative. So there's my sign chart, folks, and we are now ready to answer the question. The solution to this beast of an inequality is we want to know when that rational function f is less than or equal to 0. So it's going to be from negative infinity up to 2. 2 is a domain restriction, so it's not included in the solution. And then from 2 up to 8 thirds. Notice we're less than or equal to here, so I got a square bracket there. And that's it, folks. Congratulations. We are done with Chapter 5. Very rewarding work here.